Hi everyone, Kendall here with Lousy Llama Creations, and today we're gonna to be making this beginner-friendly succulent. I have the pattern link down below as well as the crochet kit version if you would like to get all the supplies you need. If you're a new crocheter, it's perfect. It has all the little tiny things you didn't know you need all in one kit. For supplies, I'm using medium weight for yarn. Um, I'm using Premier Basics in pumpkin, sage green, and hazelnut, light brown. I also have stuffing, 10 millimeter safety eyes, a small amount of black, and a five millimeter crochet hook. One more thing before we jump right in. If you see me making any comments about the string of pearls, this video for the pot in the dirt was originally filmed for this plant. Not this one, I used the same clips. So it's the exact same as you can tell. You're gonna get the same product because I'm not showing you how to make these, I'm showing you how to make this and how to assemble. But if I mention anything, string of pearls or leaves or whatever, this is what I'm referring to. No biggie, keep on following. To start your potted plant, we're gonna do something called a magic ring. And the magic ring is how we're gonna start our spiral or our circle to start our pot. To do a magic ring, you're gonna place your tail or the end of your yarn in your hand like this, and you're gonna form an X over your palm. Then you're gonna pinch in the middle. With your hook, you're gonna go under the first arm of the X, over the second arm, and pull it underneath that one. Then you're gonna shimmy it off, pinch. You're gonna tighten it with your finger over here. And we're gonna do something called a chain, which is where you put the yarn on top of your hook like this, and you pull through. And that's your magic ring. Don't worry, let me show that to you again. Magic rings trip up a lot of crocheters, but you just have to remember that you just have to wrap around and form an X. You have the tail forming the X, pinch in the middle, under, over. I also twist my hook down so I can scoop it. I'm twisting it up, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Here it can get a little tricky, so just go slow. This is how I hold my yarn. I have it over these three fingers and on top of here. It just kind of depends what you're comfortable with. And then for holding my hook, I hold it like you would use a knife, although a pencil grip is also really popular. It's whatever's comfortable for you. Personally, I like knife grip. That's just what I learned on. That's what I've always used. We have to do our chain one, which is placing the yarn over and pulling through. And we have our magic ring. Now we have to do six single crochets for round one. This is where we're actually gonna start making stitches and you're actually crocheting. So you're gonna place your hook underneath your two parts of the circle. So it's the tail and then the loopy part. I'm tightening with my finger. This is how I control my tension. And don't worry, it's gonna take a little bit for you to figure out the tightness of yarn. So don't worry right now. I have quite a bit of experience. I'm gonna yarn over again, like we did with our chain, and pull up. So you have two loops on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through. That's called a single crochet. And it's one of the most basic crochet stitches. That was one. We have to make six total. So I'm going under again. I like to hold it with my finger in our magic loops so it doesn't slide. Yarning over pulling through, so you have two loops, yarn over, and then here, if you're having some problems, you're gonna wanna twist your hook down so it slides through. So you have two, and then three. Something to get used to on crocheting is that movement of the hook, of up and down, up and down, but once you master that, you're gonna find crochet is a lot easier. This is my fifth. Feel free to pause the video. And my sixth. If you wanna count, you see these little Vs? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Each little V is a stitch. This is a super fun part of making a magic ring. You're gonna pinch right here 
and then you're gonna pull it tight. Ah, now you actually have a circle. Awesome. Okay. Now we get to use our stitch markers. I put mine in the last stitch I made. I'm going through both loops. This is gonna help us keep track of our spiral so that we know where the beginning and the end is. As we move on to round two, make sure you're not crocheting with this, the tail. You wanna use the yarn that's attached to your skein or your ball of yarn. For round two, it says we're gonna increase six times. An increase is two single crochets in the same spot. And you already know how to do a single crochet. So yeah, this is gonna be pretty easy. To go into the stitches, you're going to go, if you need to count, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this is our first stitch that we made. You're going to put your hook. I like to twist mine because the first round's a little tight. Twisting under, under both loops. And that's, this is where we're gonna put our two single crochets. Here's one. Don't move on to the next one. We wanna stay in the same hole, same stitch. So we have two. This is how we're gonna turn our six single crochets into 12. So in the next stitch, moving over, we're going to do it again, an increase which just means two single crochets. And we're gonna do that all the way around. I'm never too sure if I'm going crazy fast in videos, just the right speed or too slow. If you could please comment and let me know, that would help out a lot for future videos. Videos are great because you can always pause it and rewind it. You can even change the um, speed on the video. And I'll just talk really slow like a robot. But it could help you see the stitches where you need to. That was my 10th. This was our last one that we made, right? We marked it. You can either work with it in, with the stitch marker still in it or remove it. I like to move it so it stays out of the way. All right, so we have our last two. And don't forget to put the stitch marker back in the last stitch that you made. Get some more yarn out. Hope my cat doesn't steal it because she's right off camera watching me. Round three says one single crochet. We're going into the next stitch, easy peasy. And then in the next one, we're gonna do an increase. So we're turning 12 to 18. The sequence you're repeating the whole time is one single crochet and then an increase. Go ahead and repeat that all the way around. Woohoo, our circle's getting bigger. Next round, you're gonna find this repeating pattern now. We're gonna do one increase, oh, excuse me, one single crochet, the next stitch, another single crochet, and then an increase. So that's four stitches. It's one, one, increase. And then we'll do that all the way around. If I'm going too fast, don't forget there is a pattern too. If you bought the crochet kit, you'll have access to that beautiful PDF that walks you through each step of the way. This video tutorial just covers the PDF. If you don't want the kit, you can also purchase the pattern separately on Etsy. So if our last two are one single crochet and then an increase, and then two single crochet and then an increase, I bet you can guess what the next one is. You're gonna do three, one, two, three, and then an increase. And then repeat that all the way around. After that, the next round is gonna be four and then an increase, and then five and then an increase. And I'm gonna hop off camera and do that. I'll see you at the end of the round where it's five single crochets and then an increase. Hey look, we're at the base of the pot. If you find that yours is a little curved, that's okay. You're still figuring out tension. This um, pattern is pretty forgiving, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Mine's pretty flat. It's almost like a hexagon because those are where the increases stack. Our next round, we're gonna do something called the back loop only. Normally, you go through both loops. One, two, front and back. 
but for this round, we're actually just going to go through the back loop. So here, going the back loop, and we're gonna do that all the way around. Here's what it looks like after that back loop only. As you can tell, we're sort of getting a ridge. It's actually gonna push up, and this is gonna be the bottom, and then it's gonna stand up. For the next 10 rounds, we're gonna be placing one single crochet in every single stitch. Before we do so, here's a trick. Take out your stitch marker, and instead of marking the stitch, you're gonna mark the side of the stitch. Now, when we're putting one single crochet in every single stitch, when you come about all the way back around, you'll know it's one and you don't have to move it every single time. You're just gonna go round and round and round until it looks like this. And you have 10 rounds of single crochet. So go ahead and do those 10 rounds and I'll see you at the end. And you'll be so excited because it's gonna start looking like a pot. All we have to do is add the ridge. We finished our rounds and it's totally looking like a pot now, right? So we're gonna move our stitch marker back up to the top. Hello, little stitch marker. If you see cat foot, no you don't. Okay, now we're gonna do this super cool, cool stitch called a half double crochet. To do a half double crochet, you're gonna yarn over before you put in the stitch. So we just did our yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. So you have three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Cool, huh? This is gonna make our ridges. Again, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through. And you're gonna do that all the way around. And when you get to the end, you're gonna say, Kendall, this is not even, my ridge is not even. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to make it even super easy stitch called a slip stitch, but we're not there yet. So let me finish this part first. Working in my last stitch, taking out the marker. And this is what I mean, you're like freaking out. You're like, this is not even, I'm, it's not gonna look like what it's supposed to. Don't worry. We're gonna do something called a slip stitch. So you're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. And we're gonna do that twice. Pull through, pull through. Oh yeah, look at that, nice and even. We're now gonna do something called fastening off. But you're gonna to wanna to pull a good amount of yarn. I like having a ton of extra because I don't wanna be short. Then cut your yarn and pull through. You just, I'm literally just pulling this all the way. Ugh. There we go. And that's called fastening off. So now our work can't come undone. I'm gonna take this long end. Okay, maybe it's a little too long. Yours does not need to be that long. Putting it on my tapestry needle or yarn needle. And I'm gonna fold my pot lid over and then squishing it up. And we're gonna need to sew our edges around so that we have this cute little border. Where am I? There we are. There's a hundred different ways to sew things in crochet. I'll be honest, I just want it sewn. As long as it doesn't come undone, I don't care. So for this, I'm going back and forth, and I'm trying to make sure I go through the middle of the last row of stitches, but that's just preference because I think it looks a little cleaner that way. As long as it's folded over and it has a rim, who cares, right? So I'm gonna repeat this all the way around, but when you get to the end, don't cut off your string, because we're actually gonna use that to sew your dirt in later. But for now, let me get all the way over so that we can add the smiley face. Alrighty, we're at our end. We could just set this aside for now. We'll use it to sew it later, but let's add the smile in the eyeballs. If you're using one of my crochet kits, and I sure hope you are, you're gonna be seeing these two things. Ooh, that was plastic on me. Yeah, well, that's why I have that and not put in a kit. I have all the rejects. Two eyes, two backs, and some black yarn for a smile. In the pattern, it will tell you specifically, let's put our tail in the back, where to put the eyes, but I'll be real, I don't care. I want it to look cute and adorable. So I'm placing these without the backs, so it's not set in stone. I could take it out and do it again. 
I'm gonna put the mouth on so then I can even everything out. Starting from the back, I am poking through. Leave a tail. Mm, do we want a big smile? Mm, I'll see what that looks like. You're gonna make a straight line. It's gonna look weird. And then you go underneath and scoop it down. And then tighten. Not too much though. You get this cute little guy. Are his eyes still even? I think so. You're gonna put the backs on. You want it to go in this direction because you want it to be flush and safe. You should hear a little clicking noise or at least feel it. Yeah, you can't hear it, but it's there. On the inside, I'm gonna tie a knot of my black yarn, not too tight because we don't want it to pull but we also don't want it to come undone. And then I trim it so it stays out of the way. Not too close, we don't want it to come undone. Woohoo! oh my gosh, he's adorable. So we have this nice little pot, it sits on its own. Aren't you proud of yourself? You crocheted something, woohoo! Now we have to make the dirt and we have to make the, the green, the actual plant part. So let's do the dirt. You remember how we did the bottom? You did the magic ring with 6, 12, 18, 20. I won't count all the way up. So you have the, it goes <laughs> increase 6, well, 6, increase 6, 1, increase 2, increase 1, 2, 3, increase 4, increase then 5, increase. We're going to be doing the exact same thing. Why? Because we want it to fit right in it. So I have my brown yarn. Two. Doing that magic ring again, making that X, holding, under, over, pull through, chain one, and then our six single crochets on it. If I'm going too fast, please go back to the beginning of the video and follow the steps for the bottom of the pot. I promise it's the exact same thing, but you should feel a little bit more comfortable now, right? You just made the whole pot. Ooh, ooh. Where are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six. And tighten. Putting my stitch marker in. Let's get a little closer. Hi. Okay. Increase six times, and increase is just 12 single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Next round, one single crochet, and then in the next stitch, an increase. I am not gonna bore you and show you the exact same thing. You're gonna do this until it's increase, and then five single crochets all the way around. Then you're gonna fasten off, you know, just cutting and pulling through. Then you'll have your dirt, which I can show you. Looks like this, but not in hot pink. It's gonna be in brown. But that's the idea of what we're doing, the exact same thing as the bottom of the pot. To start our succulent, I have my green yarn, I'm using a sage, and I'm going to chain 40. I made my slip knot, which you can do by, I have my tail on the right, twist and pull through. If you've done any sort of slip knots before, it's exactly the same. I'm inserting my hook and then pulling it tight. You don't want it too tight that it can't move, but you don't want it too loose, it falls off. Holding my yarn, I have my hook. We're gonna chain 40. So we're gonna yarn over, which is placing that yarn on top of the hook and pulling through. So that's one chain. Two, three, four, five. You're gonna do this till you get to 40. 
at the end of 40, you should have this nice long worm. We're now going to a row of single crochets. So instead of moving in the same direction, we're going to turn around and go the opposite way. We're going to skip that 40th chain, the one right next to your hook. We're going to skip it and insert your hook into the second one. Now technically it does matter if you're in this loop or this one or the back, but this is, if this is like a beginner project for you, it really doesn't matter. Just stick it in. We'll then do our single crochets. So yarn over, pull through. So you have two loops, yarn over, pull through two. So again, into the next chain, single crochet, into the next. You're gonna do this all the way down the row. So you should have 39 single crochets at the end. Now that we're at the end, we're going to do one chain and then we're gonna turn our work. We're gonna do three double crochets in the next stitch. To do a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over and insert your hook into that stitch right next to your hook. Yarn over, pull through, so you have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. That was one double crochet where you need to place two more in the same stitch. So yarn over, I'm going into the same hole, yarn over, pull through, so I have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and I need to make one more going into the same hole, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, two, two to one. So you have these three double crochets. They're a little taller than all the other stitches. We're then going to chain two. So one, two, and we're gonna place three more double crochets into that same hole. So it's gonna be a little tight, but it'll be perfect. So yarn over and insert your hook and make that double crochet. And then do it again. And then once more, all in one stitch. Just like that. We are now gonna skip our next single crochet from our row. We're gonna skip it and do a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. So this was our really tall stitch. This is our really small one. Now we're gonna repeat it. So we're gonna skip one more and do three double crochets into the same stitch. One, two, three. We're gonna chain two and then do another three into the same stitch. One, two, three. We'll then skip one and place our slip stitch. You're gonna repeat this all the way down the row. Here's what it should look like once you get to the end. It's all curly, you got these beautiful scallops. We're gonna leave a nice long tail, cut it off and fasten off. I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle. And now we gotta make it turn into an actual succulent. Cause right now it's gonna look bad on a plant. So I'm putting my tail through my tapestry needle And I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna start turning it. I like to do this on a flat surface so I can kind of move it around a little easier. So I'm kind of gonna line up my scallops, although it really doesn't matter. I'm pinching and holding 
And because no one's gonna see the bottom, you can stitch this however you want. Just make sure you're going through all of the layers. I'm just gonna go across it a lot, making sure it's holding that shape. Again, going through it. Let's see, I missed one there. And through. Checking the top, see, I missed my middle guy, so I gotta push him in a little bit more. And make sure in this pass, I'm going through everything. Might take a little bit playing around with, but again, this is the bottom, so no one's gonna see it, so it can be as messy as you like. Kind of pushing it through to get through some of those thicker layers. There we go. This one went through all of them. Cute. I'm gonna go around a few more times, but you can do it until you think it's nice and secure. Now that I'm happy with how it looks, I'm gonna take my dirt, I'm gonna place it on top, and then I'm gonna sew it to the dirt. Again, it's the bottom, so it totally doesn't matter how you do it. I think I'm gonna go through the middle a little bit because I like my leaf sticking out. So I'm gonna go up and down through the middle, making sure all my leaves are still sticking up nice and tall. And again, you can do it as secure as you want it. And also make sure you hide your middle green tail on the inside. So you can use your tapestry needle or your hook and make sure it gets inside. This is not a necessary step, but since I have my tails on the back side, I like to do square knots. It just makes everything feel a little bit more secured, even though I promise it doesn't super duper matter. And because it's gonna be in the inside of our pot, you can leave all the tails you want. It's not gonna show. To sew it to the inside of our pot, I'm gonna put my orange tail back on my tapestry needle I'm gonna zoom us out a little bit. Howdy, howdy, okay. I'm gonna take the dirt and place it inside. And you're gonna have to hold it, hold both layers. My tail for the orange is already on the inside of the pot. So I'm gonna go through the front loop of the brown. And then I'm gonna go back only through the orange. Again, so you're gonna go, I'm going like right under the rim of the pot, going through orange, through brown, then back only through orange. One more time, through orange, into brown, down only through orange. I'm gonna do this about three quarters of the way around and then we're gonna stuff. So I just sewed about three quarters of the way around but we gotta stuff it before we close it. Trick to stuffing, you wanna pull in small clumps and place it individually. This helps give you a fuller look. You don't have to use as much stuffing and ugh, you can place the stuffing exactly where you want so it looks exactly how you want it. I like a flat bottom, so I place stuffing around the edges as opposed to in the middle. But you stuff it however you want. I'm gonna make sure my dirt kind of sticks up a little bit because I want everyone to see my pretty succulents I worked so hard on. You can also use yarn scraps in the middle if you don't wanna waste those. So you wanna pull, mm, I think he needs a little bit more. All right, going around the edges again. Put some right on top. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's looking real cute. Thank you so much for joining me today on this tutorial to make your very own succulent. I hope you had a great time. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel go a long way. If you're coming from a crochet kit video, congratulations. 
Don't forget to leave a review, send me pictures. I love seeing your finished work. It's probably my favorite thing about running my own business. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll see you in the next video.